on with unit eight and this is the last video in unit eight so this is learning target 8c part three and in this video we're going to focus on how to factor polynomials of the form a times x squared plus bx plus c so before in part one of this video we learned how to factor polynomials of the form x squared plus bx plus c so in this case our a value was equal to one what we did in that video was we used that x games method and we found two numbers that multiply to be c so multiply to be our constant term and add to be our b value which is our coefficient on our linear term we're going to build off of this concept and use the concept of factor by grouping which we learned about in the last video and put those two concepts together so that we're able to factor any quadratic polynomial so in this video since our a value is not equal to one anymore we're going to look for two numbers that now multiply to be a times c so we kind of done this before but our a value was one so i didn't have to multiply didn't have to worry about multiplying by the a value since that number was always going to be equal to one but in this video we're going to see polynomials now that have a leading coefficient that is not equal to one so they have to, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to be a times c and they still want to add up to be our b value we had done this x games method before and after that our final answer we then wrote in factored form we are going to have to take an additional step now that our a value is not equal to one so once we find those two numbers we're then going to split the middle term up so the middle term is that bx term we're going to split that using the two numbers that we found and then we're going to finish factoring by grouping so let's walk through an example with one of these so in example one it says 5x squared plus 11x plus 2 so in this case our a value is going to be 5 our b value is a positive 11 and our c value is positive 2 so we're in one of these cases now where I have a leading coefficient in front of the x squared. I'm still going to use my x games. The difference, though, is that it needs to multiply to be a times c. So in this case, I need two numbers that multiply to be 5 times 2, or 10, and they need to add to be that b term. So they need to add up to be 11. So what two numbers multiply to be 10 but add up to be 11. So if we think about factors of 10, 10 factors is one and 10, and then two and five. Well, if I look at one and 10, one times 10 is 10, and one plus 10 would give me 11. So the two numbers that will work in this example are gonna be one and 10. So we've now found our two numbers that multiply to be a times c and add to be our b term. Our second step is going to be to split the middle term up. So what I mean by that is we want to take this middle term, this 11x, and rewrite it using these numbers. So these are really representing 1x and 10x. So I'm going to rewrite this polynomial. I still have the 5x squared, but instead of 11x now, I'm going to write it as plus x plus 10x, and then I still have the plus 2. I haven't changed the problem at all because x plus 10x does give me 11x, but I've used the numbers that strategically multiplied to be 10 and added to be 11 at the same time. So this x games information is still going to be helpful, it's just not going to give me my final answer right away anymore. We're going to have to do this additional step of splitting the middle term, and we're actually going to solve it by factoring by grouping. So in our last video, we learned about how to factor by grouping, and we did that by grouping the first two terms together and then grouping the second two terms together. So for this one, we have to think about what is my greatest common factor between 5x squared and x. So our greatest common factor here would be x. I'm gonna factor that greatest common factor out of the first two terms. That would then leave me with a 5x plus one when I do that. In our second two terms, we have 10x and two. What would be our greatest common factor between 10x and two? 
Our greatest common factor here is going to be a positive 2, so remember to bring that plus sign down. And what I'm left over with then is a 5x plus 1. Well, we've seen this before in the last video. We wanted these two terms to be the same, and they are. That's actually going to be helpful in how I do factor by grouping. Now that they are the same, I can go ahead and factor out the 5x plus 1 out of both terms, and we're left with the extra stuff, which comes from our greatest common factors before. So we're left with the x plus 2, and that produces our second term there. This whole answer, I'm going to attempt to box it if I can, is our final factored form. So as we can see here, examples that have a leading coefficient in front of the x squared that is not equal to 1, these do require quite a bit more work than prior problems did. But what we're doing is combining two skills that we've already learned. We've learned how to factor polynomials of the form where I have a 1 in front of the x squared. We used our x games. We're still using that, but we have to do this additional step of splitting the middle term by using the two numbers that we found, and then finish it off by factoring by grouping. And the reason we split the middle term was because factor by grouping only works if I have four terms, and by splitting the middle term up, I'm not splitting it in half necessarily, but by breaking it apart into two pieces where those numbers are coming from our x games, that gives me four terms then, which I can then group the first two together and group the second two together. One thing you might be wondering is, does it matter which order I write these in? And it actually doesn't. So I could have written 5x squared plus 10x plus x plus 2. So I could have flip-flopped the x and the 10x. My middle line here that I'm drawing an arrow to would have been different, but my final answer would have come out to be the same. So as you're practicing these, if you're checking with a classmate, if you guys write them in different orders, that's okay. Your middle line of work will be different, but your final answer will still be the same. And as always, when we have factoring, we know that we can always check our answer by foiling everything back out. So I could distribute and I would end up with the polynomial we started with. Okay, let's look at our second example. So we have 6x squared plus 13x plus 5. So in this example, I have a leading term that is not equal to 1, so I'm probably going to have to do some factor by grouping eventually. But the first thing we always want to try to do is factor out a greatest common factor. Is there a greatest common factor that we can factor out on example 2? So there is not a greatest common factor on example 2 because 6, 13, and 5 have no common factors. So I'm going to go straight to making our x games. So our job is to get this to multiply to be what? What number am I trying to multiply to be this time? We are trying to multiply to be 6 times 5, which would be 30. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be 30. So remember, it's coming from the a times the c term. And add to be positive 13. So we have to think about factors of 30. So 30 has 1 and 30. We could do 2 and 15. We could do 3 and 10. We could do 5 and 6 would work. Are there any other factors that we could have? Thinking about all those possible factors of 30, have you thought of any two that will multiply to be 30 and add up to be 13? So the two numbers that will work in this case are going to be 10 and 3. So 10, whoops, 10 times 3 is 30, and 10 plus 3 is going to give us 13. Now that we've found those two, I can't go straight to my factored form because I have this leading coefficient of 6 in front of the x squared. And because of that, I have to instead split this middle term. So this 13x is going to be rewritten as 10x plus 3x. And the reason I'm using 10 and 3 is because those were the two numbers that worked in our x games. So when I write this next line, then we're going to have the 6x squared. The 13x can be broken apart as 10x plus 3x. And then I still have to remember that plus 5. Hmm? 
Now that I've split the middle term apart or broken it apart, I now am back to having four terms, which means I can factor by grouping. So I'm gonna group the first two terms together. What do the first two terms both have in common? So the first two terms have a 2x in common. When I factor out a 2x, I'm left with 3x plus 5. I'm going to write this a little bit smaller just so I have enough space. So the first two terms have a 2x. And when I factor that out, we're left with a 3x plus 5. What do our second two terms have in common? So it's not very exciting, but our second two terms actually have a plus 1 in common. And as silly as it sounds, I actually want to write that plus 1 because it's going to be necessary in my next step. So when I factor out the plus 1, the 3x and the plus 5 don't change, but that's okay. I got a 3x plus 5 over here, and I know I want to end up with the same term over here. I can then factor out the 3x plus 5, and we end up getting left with the 2x and the plus 1. So this is why it was really important to have that plus one because, oops, because I do need to have that as part of my second factor. And if we forgot to factor out the plus one, I might just write the two X, but that would be an incorrect answer because I do need the whole two X plus one. And those two factors multiplied together is gonna give me our final answer or give us our final answer on example two. And just to make sure that's clear, that is a 5. Okay, let's look at example 3. So in example 3, it says 3x squared plus 4x minus 15. What's the first thing we should always be thinking about when we're factoring? We should be thinking, is there a greatest common factor that all the terms have? What do you guys think? Is there a greatest common factor here? So in example three, there is not a greatest common factor, so I can go straight to thinking about my x games then. I think you guys should pause the video and try this example three on your own first, and then we'll check it together. So remember, our goal is to find two numbers that multiply to be a times c, so three times negative 15, so multiplies to be negative 45 then, and adds, to be positive four, the B term. So multiplies to be A times C and adds to be our B term. So what two numbers would work that multiply to be negative 45 and add up to be positive four? Two numbers that will work for us is going to be nine and negative five. So those multiply to be negative 45 and they add to be four. Now that I've found those numbers, can I go straight and list my answers then as x plus 9 times x minus 5, like we've done in a, in t uh, like we did in a video two videos ago? Can I go straight and say that that's my answer and be done? So I cannot do this. This is not going to be my answer because I have this leading coefficient of the 3 in front. So that worked before when I had a 1 in front of the x squared. But if I have any other number, I have to do factor by grouping. And so I have to require a little bit more work. So that will not be our final answer because of that 3. Instead, what we get to do is use these two numbers, the 9 and the negative 5, to rewrite 4x. So I'm going to break apart the middle term. The 3x squared is still there. Instead of 4x, though, we're going to get plus 9x minus 5x and we still have the negative 15. Now that we have four terms, we can do our factor by grouping. So we group the first two terms together and we'll group the second two terms together. Why don't you guys pause the video and finish this example out? Okay, let's check this one. So the first two terms have a 3x. When I factor out the 3x, we're left with an x plus three. Oops. And our second two terms have a negative 5 in common, so make sure we take out the negative, and then we're left with an x plus 3 again. That's exactly what we wanted to happen. We want these two terms to be the same here because that tells me that I can factor the x plus 3 out. Scroll down, there we go. So when I factor the x plus 3 out then, we're left with still the 3x minus the 5 as my second term.
or my second factor. So 3x minus the 5. And that will be our final answer in factored form. Remembering that we can always FOIL this back out to check our work. Let's look at example 4. So example 4 says 18x squared minus 33x plus 12. What's the first thing we should be thinking about? So we should be thinking, is there a greatest common factor between all three of those? What do you guys think? Is there a greatest common factor? In this case, there actually is. All three of those are divisible by 3. So I can factor out a greatest common factor here of 3 first. And I'm going to want to do this so that my answer is easier to find later on. And I don't have to do more factoring at the end. So factoring out my 3, we're left with 6x squared minus 11x plus 4. Oops, 4. From here now, we can continue on like we've been doing in examples 1, 2, and 3. So on the side over here, I'm going to create our x games. What will this have to multiply to be? Well, this is going to have to multiply to be 24 because I have to multiply the 6 times the 4 since I have my a term and my c term. And it'll have to add to be negative 11. Well, think about this. What two numbers multiply to be positive 24 and add to be negative 11? The two numbers that are going to work is going to be negative 8 and negative 3. Since a negative times negative will give us a positive, but negative 8 plus negative 3 will give us negative 11. We can now use that to break apart the middle term. So when we go to write this, the 3, which was our greatest common factor, just continues down. And then inside, we still have the 6x squared. Instead of negative 11x, we're going to have negative 8x minus 3x. Remember, those numbers are coming from our x games. And I still have the plus 4 from there. Now that we've broken this all apart, that we can go ahead and do our factor by grouping. So we're going to group the first two terms together and then the last two terms together. Why don't you guys do that factor by grouping on the inside and then we'll check it. So our first two terms, the 6x squared minus the 8x, both have a 2x in common. When I factor that out, we're left with a 3x minus 4 then. Our second two terms don't have really anything exciting in common. 3 and 4 don't have any exciting factors, but they're both divisible by 1. But more importantly, I know I need to end up with a positive 3 minus a 4 inside the parentheses, so I'm going to actually factor out a negative 1. That way I get a 3x minus a 4 inside the parentheses. Then don't forget that 3, which was out in front, is still being carried down, so we have 3 times that whole quantity. Our last step with factoring by grouping is recognizing that we have the same factors left inside, so we can go ahead and factor those out. I'm going to rewrite our answer up here. I still do have the 3 in front. I can factor out the 3x minus 4, since that's in common in both terms. And then the last part is what's left over, which will be the 2x minus the 1 will be in our last factor. And that will be our final answer. If we forgot to factor out our GCF at the beginning, then what would happen is that the 3 would have been multiplied into one of these and we would have had to keep factoring at the end. So it's important to always think about your greatest common factors at the beginning of the problem so that you're reducing down your numbers sooner rather than later. Let's look at example 5. So in example 5 it says 8x squared minus 36x minus 20. Is there a greatest common factor there? What do you guys think? There is a greatest common factor here. They all, oops, greatest common factor. All of these are divisible by 4. So if I factor a 4 out, we are left with a 2x squared. Squared, whoops. 2x squared, there we go. Minus 9x minus 5. 
From here, we can calculate and do our x games on the side. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be some number and add up to be a different number. So what two numbers do are, what numbers am I trying to get them to multiply to be? So I'm trying to get them to multiply to be negative 10 because it's my a times my c term. So two times negative five and add to be negative nine since that is our b term here. So think about this, what two numbers multiply to be negative 10 and add up to be negative nine? The two numbers that are gonna work here is gonna be one and negative 10. So the only factors of 10 are one and 10 and two and five, but because I need to get to be negative nine, I'll have to use one and negative 10. I can then use that to split the middle term. So remember, I can't go straight to these being my factors. My answer will not be x plus one times x minus 10. That cannot happen because our a value here does not equal one. So we have to keep reminding ourselves of that. We got very much in the habit of that when we first started factoring, but now that our a value so the number in front of our x squared does not equal one, we have to pay close attention to this. Instead, I'm gonna use the one and the negative 10 to split the middle term. So the four is still out in front. We still have the two x squared. Negative nine x can be rewritten as plus x minus 10 x, so that is equivalent to negative nine x. Then we still have the negative five. From here, we can factor by grouping, group the first two, group the last two. So the first two have a x in common and we get left with two x plus one. Oops, it should be a parenthesis. So two x plus one. What do the last two numbers have in common? Our last two terms. The last two terms have a negative five in common. So we're left with again a positive two x plus one then. And then don't forget about the four, which was our greatest common factor at the very start. We're almost done here. We have the same two x plus ones on each term. So I can go ahead and factor out that two x plus one. Of course, the four is still in front from our GCF at the start. And then our last factor is coming from the extra stuff, the x and the minus five. So our final answer here would be four times x plus two, two I'm sorry, four times two x plus one times the quantity x minus five. And I wanna make sure that I have parentheses around each factor so that it looks like it is in factor form. So in these five examples, we saw what would we do if we either have a greatest common factor between all three terms. So examples four and five had a greatest common factor, which we had to factor out at the beginning. Then from there, in each of the five problems, we're left with polynomials that have a number in front of the x squared. So we can still do an x games, but those two numbers that we find don't immediately become our factors because of the number in front of the x squared. Instead, we can split the middle term apart and then factor this by grouping, by grouping the first two together and then the second two together. The other subtle change is that it has to now multiply to be a times our c, so we have to remember to take that a into account. The last four examples in this video are going to be a mixed review of factoring overall. So I think it would be a really good idea right now to pause the video and try to factor all four of these. So these are coming from all different sections in unit eight here and we're gonna see a couple different types. Why don't you guys pause the video and try all four of them. Okay, let's check these. So in our first problem, or, or I guess example six, it says two x squared minus 10 x. The first thing I notice is that I do have a greatest common factor. Remember, that's the first method we should always be trying. If there's a greatest common factor, we wanna factor it out. So. Now that we have that, what would our greatest common factor be? So our greatest common factor here is going to be a 2x. That will leave me with an x minus five. And from here, I'm actually done because there is not anything else that I can factor with the x minus five. It is completely linear. 
So we know we're factored when all of our factors are linear, meaning I have no more x squareds or x cubes left over. Okay, hey, let's look at example seven. It says two x squared minus two x minus 12. Again, I always wanna make sure, the first thing I'm thinking about is, hey, is there a greatest common factor? In this case, there is again. Although I have a leading coefficient here on the x squared, that's actually my greatest common factor. So I can factor two out of all of these, and we would be left with x squared minus x minus our six. From here, I do need to keep going on this inside. So the x squared minus x minus six is not done because up in example six, we were left with just an x to the first in every place, but I still have this x squared. So I'm gonna have to keep factoring this. In this case though, now that I factored out the two, my leading coefficient here is a one, so I can just do an x games on this example. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative six and add up to be negative one. So what two numbers multiply to be negative six and add to be negative one? The two numbers that will work are negative three and positive two. Because my leading coefficient is a one, that means I can go straight to writing my factors as x minus three times x plus two. And then we also wanna make sure that we bring down that greatest common factor from the start. So there is our final answer, oops, for example seven. Okay, let's look at example eight. It says two x squared minus 13 x minus seven. Now in this case, unfortunately, we don't have a greatest common factor, which means we are stuck with this a value in front of the x squared. So I can set up my x games but I'm now looking for two numbers that multiply to be two times negative seven. Remember, a times our c value. So they need to multiply to be 14, and they need to add to be our b term, which is negative 13. So what two numbers multiply to be negative 14 and add to be negative 13? The two numbers that are gonna work are gonna be one and negative 14. Remember from here, I cannot go straight to writing x plus one times x minus 14. And the reason I cannot do this is because our a value here, which is equal to two, so it is not equal to one. So I cannot go straight to writing my factors. Instead, we have to split apart that middle, or break apart that middle term. So we still have the two x squared. Instead of negative 13 x, we'll have plus one x. So remember those numbers are coming from the x games. So there's a reason we did the x games. Minus 14x, and then the negative seven is still there. So we didn't change the problem. Negative 13x is the same thing as one minus 14 of them. I am gonna go ahead and erase the one because we don't tend to write it, and I wanna make sure I just have enough space here. So I get plus x minus 14x. Now that we've done this, I can factor by grouping. I can group the first two, I can group the last two together. So what do the first two have in common? The first two have an x in common, and what I'm left with will then be a two x plus one. The second two, what do they have in common? They have a negative seven in common, so I'm left with a two x plus one then. Now from here, we wanna go ahead and continue our factoring. So they both have a two x plus one. I can go ahead and factor out that two x plus one. And then the second term is going to be left with the extra stuff, extra stuff, which is the x and then the minus seven. So it's important here that I factored out the negative seven so that I can have that sign to go with the rest of the problem then. All right, our last example on here. So our next example says x squared minus 4x minus 21. So we have no greatest common factor, that's okay. So I'm gonna go to an x games, and in this case, our leading coefficient is back to being a one, so once I find my x games, I can write my factors directly then. 
So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative 21 and add up to be negative 4. So what two numbers will work? What two numbers multiply to be negative 21 and add to be negative 4? The two numbers that are going to work are negative 7 and positive 3. Because my leading coefficient is a positive 1, that means I can go straight to writing x minus 7 times our x plus 3. And that will be our final factored form. Remember, on all of these, we can always check our answer by foiling them back out. Let me make sure I've boxed our answer, sorry for us, on part 8. But any factoring problem, you can always check by foiling or distributing your answers back out. The last thing I just want to keep re-emphasizing is the difference between when your a value equals 1 and if your a value does not equal 1. So if our a value is equal to 1, then that tells me that once I do the x games, then I can go straight to my factored form. So I can use those numbers that we got in our x games and I can write that in factored form then. In the other case, if our a value does not equal 1, then I still want to do an x games. So I still want to think about the x games, but remember it has to multiply to be a times c and add to be b, versus on this x games it just had to multiply to be c and add to be b. So I'm still going to do an x games. But then from there, I want to split the middle term using those numbers that we found in the x games. Sorry you guys, the pen is lagging from the x games. And then from there, we would then do factor by grouping. Let's just make sure we have enough space. So then after we split that middle term, I would then factor by grouping. And I can factor by grouping at this point because I have those four terms. That got really messy. I don't know why the pen is acting up. But factor by, there we go, grouping. So there is a huge difference between when you have an a value that's equal to 1 versus if your a value is not equal to 1. They still both involve doing an x games, but when you have an a value that's equal to 1, I can go straight to my factored form after we did an x games, versus if my a value does not equal 1, although I'm going to do an x games, making sure I have a times c there is what I'm multiplying to be. When I find those two numbers, I will then split the middle term using the numbers from the x game, so using the two numbers that we would get here and here, and then I could go into factor by grouping. Then the most important thing to remember before you do any of this is that your first step should always be to ask yourself, is there a greatest common factor, greatest common factor overall. And if there is a greatest common factor overall, we want to make sure that we factor that out first before we do anything else. So for example, on 7, oops, I drew over the 2, but for example, on 7 here, this actually really helped us. So to begin with, I did have an a term that was not equal to 1, but because I factored out my GCF first, it ended up turning into an A value that equals 1, which made my factoring easier later on. So we always want to make sure that we factor out that greatest common factor first before we do any other type of factoring.